See, one thing we have to realize as a generation of people is, for the first time, for the very first time in the history of humanity, we have the necessary resource, capability and technology to address every issue on the planet of nourishment, health, education, well-being, you name it. For the first time, we are capable of that. The only thing that's missing is human consciousness. And that is something that's not been worked at. Everything is in place, but the human being is not in place. So the whole effort is to raise human consciousness in such a way, to bring human beings to such a state of inclusiveness that the opportunity and possibility that we are as a generation of people doesn't pass us. It's my wish, it's my intention that we as a generation of people should not let this opportunity pass by because we are for the first time, for the very first time in the history of humanity are capable of things that no other generation was ever capable of, but we are not in place. So the only thing that needs to happen is if human beings get into the right space within themselves, every other solution is right at hand. I like it. I like, I like uh, what you say. You know, just looking at, you know, comparing my situation here and you there, I'm in a closed studio, closed room, and you're out there in the open, I just heard... I'm sitting next to the rainforest. <laughs> I heard some birds in the background and I was looking at the video initially and looks like you're in a beautiful setting out there, Sadhguru. Yeah, when you hear the elephant tell me, I would like to move. <laughs> uh, interesting. So, Sadhguru, nowadays on TV, there are more channels about spirituality and spiritual channels than there are Bollywood channels on TV now. You think people are all of a sudden becoming more spiritual and looking for spirituality? Uh, people have always been looking for it. If you look back on the history of humanity, from the earliest times, human beings, the nature of human intelligence is such that it will never be fulfilled with just uh, taking care of the survival process. The nature of human intelligence would always like to inquire into more profound dimensions of who I am and what is the nature of my existence, this kind of things. So it is not new, it is just that the commercial channels are beginning to realize that there's a phenomenal interest in this area. So because they are beginning to realize, lot of uh, entrepreneurs are uh, pretending to be spiritual and so they're filling the content with all kinds of stuff. But essentially, it is commerce realizing that there is a spiritual thread in the world which is very phenomenally strong and it's there in every human being and somewhere there is an interest in everyone whether they think so or they don't think so. The nature of human intelligence is that you are interested in knowing what is the nature of your existence. You were talking about who am I and uh, I often wonder about that. Who am I? Am I or are we as a human race just a freak accident in nature? Are we planted here? 14 billion years go by after the Big Bang and all of a sudden here we are. Are we the only people in the cosmos? You want to know who you are? I don't know who I am. Don't ask such questions in the public channel. People will send you to the psychiatry ward if you go and ask somebody <laughs> who I am. <laughs> this is a question that you should direct to yourself. If you ask somebody else, they will tell you something. Now, whatever I tell you, you are asking the question invariably because there is no experience of who you are. So if I tell you something, you have only two options. You can either believe me or disbelieve me. If I tell you, you are a drop of uh, whatever, the creator, you can believe me or disbelieve me. Right now, if you are sitting in the comfort of your studio, you will believe me and tomorrow when you drive out and this, there is an issue or problem, you will disbelieve me or it will vary in so many different ways. If you believe me, you will not get any closer to reality. If you disbelieve me, you will not get any closer to reality. If you want to know, a seeking has to happen. So it is good, you have taken the first step, that is to realize that I do not even know who I am or what is the nature of my existence. Just deepen this. The pain of ignorance should tear you apart. When that happens, the seeking will flare up in such a way 
knowing is just one moment away. Because what you're seeking is not uh, sitting on top of Himalayas, it's within you. There is no distance, it's only a question of creating a certain priority. Uh, you've also not read the Gita, you ride motorcycles, you race cars, you, you fly helicopters, enjoy dancing. So what are you Sadhguru? Are you a new age yogi, a modern mystic, a super sadhu? <laughs> what you need to realize is, always if you look back on the history of, let's say our culture here, or anywhere in the world, Realized beings, yogis, mystics lived extraordinary lives. They sang, most of the sages and saints of this land are singing saints, they sang, they danced, whatever was available to them, they celebrated their life in, in its fullest possible way. It is just that uh, Agatham Buddha did not have a motorcycle. Ah, the yogi did not have a helicopter to fly. Unfortunately, it was a technological failure. It is not that they were not capable of that. So, uh, I, am I a new age or old age? No, I'm just contemporary. And always, yogis and mystics have been absolutely contemporary and relevant to the times in which, with, which they existed. Right now, this question is coming because there are a lot of people who are essentially entrepreneurs who have shaped themselves who project themselves, who dress and live like they came out of a calendar art. Their idea for yogi is a calendar, that they're looking at a calendar picture <laughs> of some, uh, you know, B-grade artist who wrote the picture of a yogi or drew the picture of a yogi. They're trying to craft themselves like that. And that is because this is all picked up from outside bits and pieces. They read somewhere, this is how Shiva was dressed, so they're trying to dress like that. It'll be weird for you to dress. How people dressed twenty thousand years ago, you want to dress like that today. You dress the way it is today and you live the way it is today because they all lived the way it was on that day. So always yogis and mystics have been contemporary and I'm contemporary too. I'm neither old age nor new age, relevant to the times in which you exist. If you're not relevant to the times in which you exist, you should have been in a museum or an archive, not living in the society. You know, you mentioned the journey inwards, and it's very hard for me to fathom what that really is. I, uh, I've heard that before, that's the ultimate journey. The space is not where you want to go, it's within you. But where? How do I look? How do I turn my eyes to the back of my head and see down my throat and down my esophagus? Where is it? Where am I looking and how far do I have to go? See, inward does not mean contemplation, inward does not mean dissection. When we say inward, I want you to, you know, it's a… in this brief time, it's difficult to even attempt this, but I want you to understand this much. What you call as my body, you accumulated over a period of time, isn't it? Yes? Yes. It is an accumulation. What you call as my mind, or is an accumulation of impressions. What you call as body is accumulation of the food that you have eaten and what you call as my mind is accumulation of impressions that you have taken in. So these two accumulations, these two heaps, a heap of food and a heap of impressions are yours. Whatever you accumulate can be yours but can never ever be you, isn't it? So if you… if you know how to keep what you have accumulated aside, what you are will stand up and glow. It's a very simple process. Sadhguru, it's so hard to find… I'm in the radio… I'm in the radio business and I try and find volunteers and employees and it's hard to find good employees. How are you able to attract so many amazing volunteers? There are a few right here who are devoting all their time, their energy to Isha. <laughs> If you are doing what everybody wants, if your life is about everybody's well-being, why will people not be there? If you are trying to extract something from them, they will run away. If you are always seeing how to offer something to them, they will be there. I should tell you this, 
Some time ago, I was doing a, uh, a three-day event for the top 30 executives of uh, a multinational cap uh, company in India. Uh, and then when we were doing this, these are companies which are always having attrition problems and they are also trying to continuously steal somebody from somewhere else. <laughs> that is the way they get their people. And uh, as it was going through and uh, we had about eight, nine volunteers who were running around and doing everything with absolute commitment and precision. So they asked me, these are like really top executives. These are companies which have over like uh, close to half a million uh, employees. And uh, they asked Sadhguru, where do you get these people? I told them, you don't get them, you have to make them. So they asked, how do you make them? So I told them, you have to make them fall in love with you. Then they asked, how do you do that? I said, first of all, you have to fall in love with them. Then they said, oh, they don't pay us for that <laughs> So, if that's the way it is, uh, people are hard, hard to come by. But there are seven billion people. Why is it that we are not looking at what can we do that all of them want? If we do what everybody wants deep within himself, always people will pitch for it and make it happen. So this is the whole thing about Isha. Isha is a hundred percent volunteer organization because Isha is not about an organization, Isha is about the people. You know, you talk about knowing people and what they want. If you ever made a Bollywood movie, Sadhguru, it'd be a big hit. <laughs> <laughs> if you show somebody a Bollywood movie, it'll entertain them only for an evening. If you show three movies in a day, they will get bored if you see if they see five movies in a day, probably they'll get sick, okay? <laughs> so, Bollywood movie is a, is a distraction for people from whatever they're doing, the boredom and the uh, repetitiveness of their life, they want to see something entertaining. But uh, what I'm offering is not an entertainment, it's a transformative process and it's a challenge for every human being it is not about continuing the way they are with a little bit of entertainment in their life. It is about transforming themselves to a new possibility. So, uh, I don't think they can even be compared. So, if I'm given a role, will I play in a Bollywood movie? Well, my life is more action-packed than bo Bollywood movies on a daily basis, so I don't think it will interest me <laughs> Sadhguru, we welcome you to Houston. It's um, one month away. Looking forward to seeing you in Houston. What, uh, what is your message for everybody in Houston? I'm not a messenger. I don't carry any message. I don't carry any philosophy or teaching. Or have I come to give you a belief system or a dogma? My effort is to bring a technology for your well-being. Today, there are various technologies to bring external well-being. Because of these technologies, human life has become more comfortable and convenient than ever before. As a generation of people, we are the most comfortable generation ever. But we cannot say we are the most joyful generation, we cannot say we are the most peaceful generation or loving generation, because we have taken care of the external technologies, we have not made use of the inner technologies.